I thought I would title this one On Dinosaurs, Dragons, and Mythical Monsters. We're looking at a vase here that's showing a depiction or one of the variations of the story of Perseus saving Andromeda from the sea monster, a sea creature. A lot of us know this tale from the Harry Harryhausen movie of Clash of the Titans or the newer one of it where this creature over to the left does not look at all like what you would think of as being the Kraken or even a sea creature. Whenever I was younger I thought that it looked like the cloud dragon that's in the never ending story more than it did anything else or really a winter wolf. In this depiction, he's known as Cetus. And through man's conflagration and figuring out bones and dinosaurs and things like that, and science, I guess, they ended up figuring out that it must have been a whale. In fact, Cetus or cetaceans are whales. There are many tales and stories written down of temples all over the known world but especially in Greece where they is said to have had the bones of titans or giants some of these look just like the femur bone of Perseus here or what a human femur bone looks like but is tall or taller than a man. Leaving with an idea that these people that had these bones must have been 35. Some bones of some dinosaurs led them to believe as much as over 60 foot tall. <clears throat> and indeed, if that was that bone and you gave the proportions correctly, <clears throat> it would be as such. In this version of the tale sun on the vase here, we don't see Medusa's head cut off, showing it to the creature turning to stone, but that might be the ideal of while he is so pale, just as Andromeda is so pale over here on the right, but they're kind of Minoan look to her. But Perseus doesn't have Medusa's head. In fact, he looks like he's actually throwing snowballs or something at the creature. Between his legs and a pile in the ground are also more stones, so he's actually throwing stones. Now, if you've ever seen Willow, there are sacred stones that you throw at something and can turn it to stone, or an acorn, like in his story, and many other mythologies that go along with this idea, other than Medusa turning creatures to stone and such. But this doesn't look very much like the depiction that we normally see, and there's no sign of Pegasus also. Because in a lot of the tales, Pegasus actually comes out of the throat of Medusa after she's had her head cut off. There's a strange thing to that whole story, and I've done a whole separate video about Medusa, but what we're looking at here is somebody in the Orion pose that we know well. In fact, if this was just reversed around, you would see it much easier. In fact, he has that handbag that everybody talks about in so many videos. But in this version, that does take the exact same place as the Golden Fleece did. But his mode of locomotion here to get very quickly to help her out in this situation in the zodiacal tale that goes on here shows that he's wearing the boots of mercury and that goes much faster that is at the speed of lightning which is effectively much faster than pegasus can fly even though he is much much faster than a regular horse in any mythology and he doesn't have to worry about climbing up over a pass he flies As I said earlier, there are a lot of temples 
dedicated to the gods, and many of which had bones, which we now realize were of dinosaurs. And they were utilized to show some type of proof. Now, I've been asked a couple of times, why could the Greeks have come up with their mythology and their BS that they had over everything and the way the world was working? Even in their own tales and later in it, whenever they're even talking to like the Egyptians and stuff, they admit that their tales of old are kind of like children's fairy tales. And then again, that's really what it is in a modern day when we look at it. And most of the time, it's more of an Aesop's fable where you're meant something to get something out of it. But in elder times, these mythologies were generally used or quite frequently, whenever two people had a conflict with each other, but an agreement was made in some way, and the mythology had to do with what the big change had happened quite often to a few of these situations. The version that we're talking about here is where a people used to sacrifice maidens in the hopes of rain, and other things <clears throat> to a sea god. Much of people would try to connect this to Neptune, but this is not. This is a creature that he apparently had domain over. But in that concept, they had to sacrifice a maiden, and they would take and chain her to something at low tide in the rocks, down in the surf. And when the surf rose up, it would kill her effectively drowning her, and then creatures would eat her. Looks like sharks and things like that, and this was supposed to have been appeasement to give to someone. Just like if you're in the Bible trying to give God any type of food that you just basically burnt it to a crisp and so the smoke would go up in the air, and he really liked the smell of barbecue apparently. But this was a stopping of that situation where Perseus had came to him. And if you've read old Herodotus and things, there's a lot of weird tales. And he was led to believe all kinds of things, which he wrote down about. Everything from giant ants in India that bring up gold and griffins and such, which we now realize are actually people finding something like a triceratops skull or a ceratopsid which has a beak like a bird and so on, but a robust body, and they ended up giving him connectives and then hook it up to the Zodiac because that's where that tail resides, and then he gets some of the points of the Zodiac that goes along with it are the four cardinal points. Quite frequently. As in a scorpion's tail or Leo the lion the actual man of Aquarius and the famous bird. I could tell you a lot of these tales of where they have these bones at and this concept actually led on and very something similar goes along with bibliological archaeology whenever they tell you they have in these bones of these saints and stuff and that really is a carrying on of some type of ancestor veneration and we've talked so much about but here's something i wrote down 35 years ago I'll go over real quick here <clears throat> in 58 bc marcus aurelius scorus he was an impressive and trying to impress people roman politician he arranged for games that were much like the early Olympics, but mixed with a World's Fair kind of flair. And in the circus circus area, he set up a zoo with many animals from all around the world and the edges of the known world, and even had a moat with a lake with crocodiles from the Nile in it and hippos. 
There was a gladiator arena that held many of the games also, and even an imported marble column theater that was made out of wood, but it had columns all set up into it. And apparently the way they set it up, the columns went from the ground, but where they built the thing into them, they put extra platforms in there, looking like the columns were just standing in there. It was quite impressive in its own right. They also had exhibits. And uh, this was said to draw most attention. It was very impressive. And it was a display on the campus ground of marbles from distant lands. Now the centerpiece that they showed were colossal bones said to be of Cetus, or the Kraken himself, which was used to devour young maidens and Andromeda, as you see here. And like the proverbial sacrifice to a dragon or a sea monster in so many tales, its ribs alone were the size of an elephant. So these people were looking at this knowing this was not any elephant. This was something far more huge than anything like that that they had ever seen. Ribs were much taller than a man. Its spine was some 40 foot long. So you can imagine the size of this creature. But it was shown here in these bones. And uh, this spine of 40 foot made up of vertebrae that were at least a foot and a half in diameter. Like column sections set down through. So you can imagine this kind of. Remnants of giant hands were there, but no sign of legs or feet, leaving us with the idea of the Kraken that we have today, such as we see in the movie Clash of the Titans, which this one is the Harry House and one that I'm talking about. <clears throat> a lot of people have made the conflagration an idea that this was actually just a whale and that that easily could have been 40 foot. But some other tellings about it say that it may not have been a whale or a common whale that is seen today or was even seen at that time because the bones were turned to stone in a way that was odd. And they thought that was a confirmation of the Medusa idea. Yet now we know that that is fossilization and that's where the bones do something like that. And it doesn't happen in a few moments if you look at some ugly weird lady with snakes coming out of her head. It happens over tens of thousands of years. These people at this time, somehow all of humanity at this time, had amnesia. And had somehow forgotten the entirety of hum humanity from before the end of the last ice age and had maybe some remnants and actually not much of anything all the way down to some 6,000 years ago. And what they knew of, of the cities and things that people knew were there before they were there, before they were there, there, all added up to being about this date somehow. And they knew that Samaria was one of the first cities to go. And of course there and their tales that led to the idea of where we get it in our Bible. That somehow the earth was created just 6,000 years ago. But in a modern time we know it goes back much further. There's a lot of ideas, radiocarbons off and all kinds of things. But one thing's for sure. If it's off a factor by 10 or 100 or 1,000 it's still not that story. goes back much further, but then again, if you look at the story and the way that they come down through time, perhaps the Greeks here understood it a little bit, and we're talking on epochs of time which were far vaster and greater than we gave them credit for talking about. Something that had happened 20 generations ago, Versus 20,000. Or must have been in the Wayback Machine like we look at it nowadays. But in that time, just the zoo that he set up would have been incredible with all the animals that they had that people there had never seen before. But once they saw that sea creature, and they knew what a whale was. 
and I'm telling you by the descriptions of it, they didn't think that that was a whale. And if this vase was created after it, they got the idea that the head was like this and it had these giant teeth and stuff in it. And you might get these weird pictures of sharks back in the day and things like that that look weird in the face like this somewhat. But that really doesn't look like what we think of as the Kraken. In fact, because of Leviathan and the stories that came out of that, which are a lizard-type idea, the Kraken was really given a look in that Harryhausen movie that looked like the creature of the Black Lagoon. Only some 60 foot tall. And perhaps from the legs down was like an iguana or didn't have any bottom legs at all. Just a top set. So he was a giant Naga serpent. In a way. These bones, whenever we find these over time, give people different ideas. And you can imagine that why the Greeks were so adamant on their idea of the way things work out and brought about these mythologies are the fact that they had the bones there in front of them and there was no way around that fact. It was not some bullshit that some people had said and so on and had no proof to show anybody, but right there is a bone that's like a leg bone. I mean, here's a, here's a skeleton and there's a leg bone and it looks just a lot, well, a lot like that leg bone and they're saying that must have been what was it and they don't have any idea that these dinosaur creatures really exist that we know of nowadays and in putting two and three together and coming up with nine somehow they came up with the idea these were giant people and that bone 